Well, here we are coming upon another anniversary. Yeah. Uh, very thankful. Uh, each anniversary, I'm very thankful for God allowing for us to exist. Yes. Which anniversary uh, is this? This is number 28. Wow. And um, looking forward to celebrating that. God has allowed for us to see another anniversary of the church. What are some highlights? You know, as we look over the years, what, what are some highlights that come uh, to mind for you uh, that, that we have experienced here sure. at the church? I think um, probably for me, some of the first highlights would be for us even uh, coming from California to Virginia. Uh, it was a challenge, but it was a highlight when you look back at it now because um, we had to completely rely upon the faithfulness of God. And so uh, that was a highlight for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, just seeing the, the stages that the church, uh, you know, went through mm -hmm. from we started out in the school yes. and then uh, we moved to my uh, our living room yes. uh, and then our garage. Yes. Um, and just to see God's faithfulness mm -hmm. as we um, went through those types of uh, changes and how the Lord showed me that our church will be like a fish in a fishbowl. Sure. That he will grow the church to the size of the fish fishbowl mm -hmm. uh, that it's in. And God, you know, he's really been faithful in doing just that in every facility where we were in, he grew us to the size of the fishbowl that did. it was in. From uh, from the our living room, we had to move to our garage, our mm -hmm. two-car garage. Then we uh, moved, uh, you know, off of uh, 17. We were at three services there, a little sanctuary that said 100 people. Mm -hmm. um, but before 17, remember we were off, uh, was it Warwick? Yeah, we were a little, 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 build, a little building off of Warwick. Mm -hmm. We were there for eight months. That's yes. why it's part of our history, it but is. I didn't quite throw it in there. But 17, we were there for six years sure. off of Route 17 in Yorktown. Uh, York County. And so, you know, just to watch God's faithfulness there that moved us to down the road to the Denby campus. Uh, and then, you know, to move here. And I just remember the time, it was around 750 of us that came and uh, prayed around this location. Yes, remember, the we, location. yeah, yes. the, this location we're in now, because there were some hiccups. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we just, for some reason, we just couldn't it could make it happen. We could make yeah, the deal the Lord, happen. Yeah, the Lord just it wasn't the timing for it. And so we came around on Sunday mm -hmm. after uh, what third, three, yeah. three, four First, services, mm -hmm. four services. Yeah. We came here and locked hands around this facility and prayed. We and did. that week, it went through. Yes, that week. So yes. those are some highlights. Uh, just uh, and then the lives that has been changed over yes. the years because we're a military area uh, we see people come and go every three years and so to watch their lives change as they come under the teaching of the Word of God and just to see their lives change that's been a, a major uh, highlight for me. And I also think with even with the main radio ministry it has oh. gone outside of just the four walls of the church um, but with the radio ministries like you are literally heard like around the world yeah. and so um, I think that that is a major highlight who would have ever thought um, that you know you being faithful to just coming cross country um, to the uh, to the a place of unknown yeah. that this is where you know we will be today so no, it, that you you brought that point. That that point of the radio ministry mm -hmm. uh, has just blown me away. And now because of the internet, now we are uh, you know worldwide, mm -hmm. and um, people are watching us uh, all around the world. And that that just blows me. I know where we came from. Yes. And that just blows me away just mm -hmm. to see how God is truly faithful to his word. He says in Psalm 138 verse 2 that God exalts his word above his very own name and God has been faithful uh, to his word. And so that's been a major highlight to see how faithful God mm -hmm. has been uh, to the word of God, to the teaching of the word of God. Yes. yes. That's been a great highlight. It has me. been. So as we as we look at those highlights, we've also seen some challenges as well. Mm -hmm. With every ministry uh, worth its salt, yes, 
um, you're going to go through some challenges mm -hmm. and some tough times. Some hiccups and yeah. some bumps. And, and, and bruised. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and anything I've gone through, you've had to feel that. Sure. So what, what has been some challenges that you've really felt as we are now embarking on almost 30 years of being here? What were some challenges that stand out to you that were, um, let's say, painful experiences? Um, some of the painful experiences could have been, um, you know, when we just see people that would have transitioned onto, you know, other ministries, uh, people that you held close to your hearts. Um, but for whatever reason, they were here with us for a season and the Lord moved them on. And so, um, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, because we know that we're going to be in heaven rejoicing, you know, with them one day. Um, but even in the, um, as people have gone on, the Lord has just been faithful to fill it, fill up the space with, you know, with people to replace those who had gone on, moved on. So that was a difficult time, difficult season. Yeah, it's always hard. You never, as a pastor, you never get used to people leaving no. for whatever reason, no. be it military, mm -hmm. be it they're upset over something. You, you never get used to that. That's yes. always a difficult time. Um, and, and I can pinpoint the, the difficult years that we've gone through and the painful, because as a shepherd, God gives us a shepherd's heart. Sure. And as sheep go astray or as sheep leave for whatever reason, for, you know, something I said or did or didn't do, um, it's, it's always painful. Sure. Um, there can be, you know, a, a thousand people who will come, uh, but then there will be some who leave for whatever reason and you still feel that pain. Mm -hmm. And I, I told one pastor, I said, the moment you stop caring, that's the moment that you need to hit the brake to see what's going on sure. because you no longer have the heart of Jesus. See, yes. he left the uh, 99 to go after the one. Sure. And so when we stop caring about people leaving for whatever reason, um, that's when there's a problem. So, you know, for me, those, those are challenging times. Those are they always were. painful, uh, painful times. You uh, know what, but I love how God is just so perfect in how he does what he does. Because even with those that have gone away, there have been opportunities for there to be reconciliation, you know, with them. And so, which has been so sweet. It's like the Lord has given us a glimpse of heaven, you know, in our time of being able to rejoice with people uh, eternally. And so, but, but he's given that glimpse here on earth where it's like, yeah, we get to be with them and, you know, say I'm sorry, or it's like, ah, oh, forget that. Let bygones be bygones. And it has just been a really sweet time. We had a, a time of that, what, back in June with, with a couple? Oh, yes, June. yes, And so, yes, yes. I mean, it was just really a sweet, sweet time. And I love how the Lord heals yeah. in spite of the stuff. What, what the enemy meant for evil, God turns the thing around and he means it for good. And he's used it for his good. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, those are very humbling as well because our you know our flesh you know wants to do something different and God wants us to love and sure. by this all men shall know you are my disciples mm -hmm. by the love you have one for another in John 13 35 so we have to be examples of God's agape love sure. be an example of the believer in word and faith and love mm -hmm. in spirit and purity mm -hmm. so we and that word love is agape we need to be examples of agape love and it's not always easy no uh but it's something god will always gives us the grace to do what we can't do on our own. sure it is. it's been sometimes it's been a little bit of a challenge um yeah. to do those things that god has called us to do because our flesh just like you said doesn't want to do those things yeah. and i think that sometimes for me it has caused it had caused me to do ministry like a turtle in yeah. that um you know, I'll poke my head out to yeah, do ministry yeah. and I come back in to be over my, uh, be within my protective shell, my yeah. protective covering. Yeah. But that's not how God will call us to do yeah. ministry yeah. with people, for people and to love on people. I remember you had given a message um, years ago about how Jesus was into people and that yeah. message stuck with me. I mean, it probably was maybe 20 plus years ago and I'm oh, sure you've okay. given it another, okay. you know, again, but about how Jesus was into people yeah. and how we have to be into people. And so it was a reminder to me that, wait a minute, in spite of the hurt or whatever, you know, I could not have ever been more hurt than what Jesus, the hurt that Jesus yeah. experienced. Yeah. And so, but that I'm called here 
to love on people, even when people are unlovable. And there's times when I maybe have not been as uh, as lovable as I could have been, you yeah. know, towards people. But so it was a reminder, you know. Yeah, it, it, what you just said reminded me of 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 a post that I, I put out this week mm -hmm. that I got from somebody else. You know, Solomon said there's nothing new well, on this We side. just glean, we yeah. just glean. And so it says, as Christians, we're not just to love Jesus, mm -hmm. but Judas as well. Oh. And mm. many people were like, whoa, yeah. yo. And, mm. and that's the thing, you know, we have seen Judas, mm -hmm. um, folks who have betrayed us. Sure. Uh, we have seen Ahithophel. Ahithophel, uh, he was the one who, um, you know, betrayed David. Yes. Uh, that Judas was a, you know, I mean, Ahithophel was a, a forerunner of Judas. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen those people and to be able to uh, still love them. That's heavy, yeah. to love the Judases. Yeah. You know, that's heavy. Yeah, because that, that is, because it's not natural. No. It's not natural no. for us to do so. But I love how you've encouraged the body to pray for those who spitefully use you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because I had to live that. You had to live so that. I'm not telling them something I'm not doing right. myself. Right. You know. We want to easily be on spite. Wow. Uh, that's what I. That's flesh. comfortable. Yeah, it is. You know, render evil for evil. Yes, that's, that's what we want to do. That's uh, but the Bible says, don't do that. Don't do and, that. Uh, only Jesus gives us, he gives the grace to forgive. He gives us the grace when we need it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm thankful that we've seen that over the years because there's, there's, there's been a couple of times in the ministry that I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to quit. You want to quit? Oh, I tell you, <laughs> oh, that's, and you know me as a Marine, I don't quit anything. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to take the hill. But there's a couple of blows, challenges, uh, that even I gave thought of, of of quitting again, and that will move us into the into the third one um, that represents our our shirts, talking about smiling again, mm -hmm. um, because what this comes on the tail end of the challenges, the challenges of 2020, sure. um, you know, wiped any smile off off of Absolutely, my face. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you were in a place. Yeah, I was. You were in a bad place. I was in a bad place. And I watched you be in that yeah. bad place. It and was, I'm sorry you had to see that. Well, it is what it is. That's, yeah. what, that's what spouses do for one yeah. another. You yeah. know, we just endure the hardship. You know, oh, as a good soldier, that's mm -hmm. what, you know, but I wasn't enduring hardship. But you never know, because it's going to come your time when you'd have to endure the hardship uh, with me. Yeah, well, I'm okay <laughs> with that. Okay, I'm okay. I stand guard yeah. as, as, yeah. as a Marine. Mm -hmm. You know, but that that was, you know, coming off of that, yes. um, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, especially in public, jovial sure. and very bubbly, and I'm very, you know, welcoming and all of that. 2020... And, and not understanding that our, our nation had not gone through a pandemic in over 100 years. Sure. So no one knew how to navigate through this. And it took away your smile. And it took away it took my away smile. Your smile. It did. Yeah. Uh, it took away the joy because I, I blame God. I mm. said, you allowed the pandemic to kill the church. And, and God had to you know, allow for me to get that out. And then he began to show me what he was doing in purifying his church, separating the sheep from the goats mm -hmm. and just really uh, doing that sort of thing. And so once I saw God doing that and I said, ah, okay, now I see. It's like what Asa said in Psalm 73. He said, my foot almost slipped when mm -hmm. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, but when I went into the sanctuary, then yes. I saw their end. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was in the sanctuary that I saw what God was doing. I saw the big picture, mm -hmm. or I saw COVID from God's perspective. It's like he was rebuilding his church all over. Oh, no, no doubt. You know, and in the rebuilding of his church, he, re he rebuilt you yeah. and gave yeah. you new vision, yeah. gave you new ideals, yeah. gave you different ways to think of things. Gave me a reason to smile again. That, that was huge. Yes. I didn't yes. think that that was going to come. Mm. Well, you know, it was a hard time, too, because you lost both of your parents in a very short amount of time. Uh, and within so, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so it was, it was, it was a, a bunch. It was a big combination of things oh, that you dealt yeah. with. However, yeah. we can smile again, you know. Yeah. Because no matter what, Jesus is coming back. Yeah. Um, and we got to be faithful in what we do. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, I, I'm just looking at off the tail end of 2019, we celebrate our 25th 
uh, anniversary yes. and the place was packed out. We're in our sure. new sanctuary. Every every week after the you know the anniversary, more people were coming. Lives were being changed and sel- souls were being saved. And then you know the pandemic <laughs> hit March of 2020, and I'm in this brand new sanctuary talking to a camera. Uh, that was that was that was very very hard. That wiped out wiped away my smile but once again as God has been showing his faithfulness something that's never happened in the history of our church we normally trying to keep the ship steady in the summer we have been seeing a growth of the church Mm -hmm. in the summer Mm -hmm. and that has blown me away sure so and in addition to our church we've seen the growth of our academy our school oh yeah um which I know has been a vision of you to be able to have a place where um, you know the the children can be taught. Yeah. Um, you you always envision from from daycare to yeah. on up through college and even through a Bible college of sorts. Yeah. So yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's been our heart. Yes. Um, that's been and it's still it's still my heart because I think our niche well, within the body of Christ is education, mm-hmm. and I think God has us to educate the body of Christ. Sure. And so that's our niche. Some churches, their niche is worship. Some churches, their niche is something different. Uh, I think our niche is education, discipleship. I think that our niche, even though we still worship, Mm -hmm. we still do small groups, we do all these things. But I think our niche, the the way we teach the Word of God, that's just our niche in in the body of Christ. And... um, um, You know what makes me smile is that every time when I hear someone say, um, that maybe has been in our church for a month or so. And they will come to you and say, or they'll come to me and say, I've never heard the Bible taught like that before. That I've learned more in my time being here just these last few weeks than I've learned in my lifetime of going to church. And so that is definitely reason to smile. Oh, let don't me, you think? Let me tell you something. Every time I hear it, and yes. it's, it's practically almost every Sunday. Mm-hmm. It, it humbles me, blows me away, and it does give, and it's just a little little something God gives for me to smile again. Sure. Um, and I never forget it um, a few years ago, and I think he's too sick to come now. There was a, a man who, at the time, they had been at our church uh, for a year. Okay. And he said, I've learned more in a year than in the 70 years mm. I've been going to church. Okay. I've learned more in the I remember here. that gentleman. Yes, and, he, and mm. I think he's a, a little too old yes. to come now. Um, and because I'm talking about 70 years sure. in church, so mm-hmm. you know, he gotta be close to 90 sure. years old. So, but um, that has given me reason to smile. God gives those little things, little encouragements to say, you know what, you can smile again. I'm still at work, I'm still on the throne, I didn't get off, and that you can smile uh, in what I'm doing presently, the new work. And I like, I love, I smile at the new work that he's doing in me. Sure. Um, a lot of sacred cows that I had mm. pre-COVID um, are now been put on the altar, and um, now, you know, I can smile at the new things sure. that God is doing, the new work, the new generation going after them. Sure. And that, I, There's I'm like shocked. this freshness yeah. and this newness of life and this, there's the excitement in that, yeah. you know, in the new thing. It's like the same excitement that we had when we came here. Oh, you yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, Lord, so what are you going to do now? What What is the thing you're going to do today? And so, yeah. you know, that... It, yeah, God. Yeah, let's see him rebuilding his yes. church. You know, um, what I'm looking forward to um, right now is number one, continuing to do ministry with you, mm-hmm. sweet thing. You're so lucky. Yeah, I am. I'm a very <laughs> lucky guy here. Uh, but I'm looking forward to reaching a whole new generation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with the gospel of Jesus Christ the, and the teaching of the word of God. Um, there are still people um, that come to our church that have been in church for many years, but sure. they've never been taught mm-hmm. uh, the Word. So I'm looking forward to teaching a whole new cr- group of people uh, the Word of God and just seeing their eyes light up when they hear the Word taught the way God has blessed us to be able to do it. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to raising up new 
and young, a new generation sure. of, of pastors sure. and leaders. It's and, necessary because yeah. when you don't do that, the church will eventually die. So yeah. you have to, um, you know, look for, yeah. you know, newer people to do the work. Yeah, and you know, and I see it as well. Um, um, you know, even with worship, sure. Um, you know, in, implementing new yes. uh, and younger uh, singers and things uh, in the midst, mm -hmm. and so I'm looking forward to just a freshness, a refreshing, as God is refreshing uh, me, um, and I'm looking forward to pouring forth that refreshing into a new generation. What about, is there anything that you're looking forward to? Uh, I think the same things in that um, I'm looking forward just to what the Lord is going to do. I'm looking forward to his continued faithfulness um, in the work that's being done here. I'm looking forward to doing ministry, you know, and yeah. continuing it with you. Um, and I know that um, uh, even in your years as you're getting older, yeah. like you're just kind of seeing things a little differently. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I look forward to that. Um, uh, yeah. Just us just continuing on into what God has called us to do. do. One, one last thing. Um, this is a this is new what and is this that? is where the challenge is. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to no longer fishing just in the pond, yeah. but now fishing in the ocean. Yes. Because of the internet and podcasts and all these and how the message um, through YouTube and things are going around the world yes. now that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Russia and those countries are now Africa, open. Yeah. They've yeah. opened back yes, up yes, now yes, yes. Uh, for a block. They have blocked all mm. kind of broadcast stuff, but they're opening back up. And I'm seeing, you know, over in China, Japan, of course, Africa, uh, Australia, sure. and these places. So now that is that's that's fishing in the ocean no longer is this, we got our little fishing uh, pole in newport news mm -hmm. the pond in newport news now there's a potential of, of of fishing in the ocean it takes different equipment yes it takes a different boat it mm -hmm. takes a different crew and i'm looking forward to how god god always gives the the right people at the time that you need it and so um, God is going to bring those who are gifted and um, in these areas and going to help us to be able to fish in the ocean. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So it's exciting times, Absolutely. even though we're looking at, we're knocking on our third decade of being here. I can't who believe knew? It. No, I know. Who knew? <laughs> um, but there's a, a new adventure. Yes. Uh, that, you know, and taking ventures of faith. That's, yes. That's what Calvary Chapels are all about, and that's what we want to continue to trust God to help us to through prayer to fish in the ocean. Yes. So, good stuff. I'm thankful, um, you know, to be able to have this discussion sure. with you and walk down memory, memory lane, lane a little bit, and um, and I can just see just a difference um, how God has brought us through because. Some of the challenging years, I would have spoke about them a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And to be able to speak about them now in a very discreet, in a very loving kind of way, uh, shows that God has changed me in a and lot. And healed. And, and healed. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good important. word. So we're looking forward to God's will, uh, some more time until he comes. And, uh, and I just pray that what we talked about was helpful uh, yes. to some people. We will occupy until he comes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>